So I have something to show you all. So I acquired this book right here. This book is The Way, and it also contains Faro and the Forge. And it was written by Saint Jose Maria Escriva, who is the founder of Opus Dei. I had the opportunity, as you guys know, I've talked about it a couple times, of presenting at the Young Catholics Professionals National Conference in Dallas this year, where I did a fitness presentation. I got to do a workout for those who were brave enough to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning on Saturday and sanctify our fitness and our bodies to our Lord Jesus Christ with a good workout and good sweat. This year's Young Catholic Professionals Conference was inspired by Saint Jose Maria Escriva and was called Workers in the Vineyard. It centered around inspiring young adult Catholics to be brave in walking by faith in their professional work and truly allowing Christ to permeate all aspects of our lives. This is also very similar to the spirit of Opus Dei and the personal prelature created by Saint Jose Maria Escriva. Upon my return to Los Angeles, I have had the incredible opportunity to attend a few meetings at one of the Opus Dei centers here in LA. Now recently I attended what's called a recollection, which is kind of like an evening retreat. Now while I was there, I came across this book and I decided to pick it up because of course, when you get into Opus Dei, you get involved with any of their stuff, they're like, oh, you gotta read the way. <laughs> so here is the way, it was sitting right there on the table. I picked it up and I started reading it and it has been absolutely incredible. There's one section of it that stopped me. Well, there's a couple of sections that stopped me in my tracks, but the one that I wanna talk about today is something that is often talked about within Catholic and Protestant circles. When you go into a Catholic church, what's the first thing that you see? Well, you see a huge crucifix hanging above the altar. In contrast, whenever you go to any Protestant church, there is no crucifix, there's just a cross without the body. And their reasoning for that is because Jesus Christ has risen, he is no longer on that cross. And therefore he should not be displayed on the cross in their houses of worship. In contrast, we as Catholics, we are not afraid to gaze upon the body of our Lord beaten, humiliated, debased. We are not afraid to look upon the suffering because it's in that suffering that we unite ourselves with Christ, that we remember every single time we step into a church, what we are there for and what that ransom costs for our souls. And I've always held that position and I still do. However, there was something very beautiful that I read in the way in the section on mortification. I wanna share that with you to open up a discussion in our comments below. In the way under mortification, number 178 says the following. Whenever you see a poor wooden cross alone, uncared for, worthless and without a corpus, don't forget that that cross is your cross. The everyday hidden cross is unattractive and unconsoling. The cross that is waiting for the corpus it lacks. And that corpus must be you. And in response to that, it got my mind toiling. And the idea behind the way furrow and the forge is for you to take these sections that you're reading and to meditate upon them, to pray upon them. And so what I often like to do is I like to read through the entire section and then go back one at a time and do exactly that process, thinking about it, being contemplative about it, bringing it into prayer and reflecting and trying to extract the lesson that I'm learning from it. And here's what I wrote as a journal entry after reading that one, because it stopped me in my tracks. As Catholics, it's hard to understand why Protestants could pray before an empty cross, as much as it's hard for them to understand why we pray before it with the crucified body of Christ. But Saint Jose Maria Escriva puts it in such a beautiful way, in the way, under mortification. He tells us to look upon the empty cross as a sign that it is you who has to get up on that cross. It is you who has to be crucified. It is you who has to sacrifice in the same way Jesus sacrificed himself for us. Jesus Christ tells us in the gospel that we have to be willing to pick up our crosses and follow him. And in that way, gazing upon an empty cross has such a profound meaning because yes, he is risen, but now it's your turn to nail yourself on that cross, to be humble, to lower yourself, to empty yourself so that we can be redeemed. And we are able to be willing to leave the world behind, leave everything we own behind to pick up our crosses to follow him. And that's what I want to talk about today. I feel this 
crazy buzzing, burning fire in my soul that I just can't sort of contain. And I'm trying to learn how to channel like in a very productive way that not only edifies me, but edifies anyone who hears my voice. And I notice how when you go deeper in faith, when you pray more, when you consecrate yourself to the Blessed Mother, I do this through the Brown Scapular. I told you guys about that. I dedicate my business and the work that I do to our Lord Jesus Christ. I start really making a habit of attending mass as often as I can and learning what it means to pray every single day, to live and pray without ceasing. And what I've discovered is that sanctifying what I do through work, sanctifying what I do every day of my life is an open prayer to God. I wake up every morning and the first thing that I say are a couple of lines that work for me. The first thing is something taken right out of Opus Dei. Lord, I will serve you. Jesus, I trust in you the words of St. Faustina. But then I follow that with, Jesus, I choose you, my own dedication to go deeper. And finally, Lord, I will commit and I will submit, meaning that I commit my life to you and I will submit to you always. That is what I wake up to say, to humble myself, to know that my will is not what matters here. It's his will and how he wants to use me. And what that's also allowed me to do is to be 100% open and willing to pick up my crosses and to nail myself to that cross in the same way that he has, to bring my sufferings united with him, to bring my doubts and my worries to him, to allow myself to know that I'm not perfect, but in his grace, I may reach perfection in my final day on this earth when I'm taking my last breath and I'm hopefully being received in his arms in heaven. Well, I'm probably going to stop in purgatory along the way for a long time. I'm totally, totally expecting that. But the Blessed Mother told us that if we wear a scapula, she's going to come and get us. Okay, so listen, I'm hoping all those adults and graces. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and pray. <laughs> it's not about that. But at the end of the day, how are you viewing yourself on that cross? After he has risen, he's left a space for each of us to say, here, this is yours, take it. So what does that mean to you when you hear this? How does that hit your heart? That's what I want you to answer in the comments below. This call to faith is such a crazy roller coaster of a ride. It's not valued as much in our society. Sometimes we think that just by going to mass every day or praying a few times, you know, if we remember just to even pray during the morning, say your grace, maybe say a rosary here or there, that that's enough to be doing what you have to do as a Christian. But the truth of the matter is, is that you're not doing enough, that there's always more to do. That when you look at how you can really truly show up as Christ in your life every single day, and what that means, the sacrifices that you're going to have to make, the willingness that you have to have to be someone who was flogged for what you believe, shunned in cases for what you believe, because he told us that if they hate you, remember they hated me first. That is such a hard thing to deal with or to even want to take on. The burden is too heavy. But I've got to say that my life has been just changing in ways I, I, I could never predict. And I encourage you guys to go deeper. It's scary and it's vulnerable, but I think taking these steps to sanctify every part of your life through Jesus Christ to be willing to nail yourself to the cross, to look at that empty cross, not as something that's beneath what we believe as Catholics, but that opportunity to say, how can I take his place? That, that is going to head you towards the, the life of a saint.